DreamHack Open is brought to you by Astro, Monster Energy, Corsair, Hacks, and GG Bet. When you think of Spain, images of bullfighting, flamenco dancing, and fiestas undoubtedly spring to mind. But what else is there to Spain, might you ask? The Kingdom of Spain is officially known as the second largest country in EU and was once a number of separate kingdoms with different languages. Spanish is the second most widely spoken language in the world, but Chad Sponge Virtual, I'm going to go ahead and say that in case you didn't know, nudity is legal in Spain. My name is Trace Stunasaranthus, and I am here on the desk as your host, and of course, to my left would be my esteemed colleagues and a political crew that is Bleh and Sponge. But none of this would be possible without our sponsors in Astro, Corsair, Monster Energy, and well, as always, Hacks GG. Now, without any further ado, perhaps I bring you guys into the camera shot. So we're taking our clothes it's off based on that opening, or like what? What's legal going on? How many buttons can I undo? Not, not oh. sure it's legal on Twitch. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I think there's, uh, the, there's an asterisk. That was scary there. Asterisk. Uh, you had your chance, uh, but got not close. on camera. It got close. Um, look, it was good to see you at the gym this morning at 6 a.m. Yeah, it was. Uh, we're out there. We're lifting weights, yeah. getting jacked, having a good time. There's two dudes in the gym. You know how it is, getting man. Getting jacked. You know how it is. Yeah. Fun. Play? Slept well. I didn't even know we had a gym. It's a, it's a mini gym. Yeah, there's not much to it's it. It's called mini gym. Be completely honest. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty fine. Just, you know, eating, sleeping, drinking. I think that's a good uh, time to... Uh, a uh, well, good way to spend the uh, the day, so to speak. Speaking of days, we had a hellacious day of Counter Strike yesterday, full of topsy turvy results. One in which included a 16 to one, not in the favor of Virtus Pro, but instead in the favor of Fraxers. Let's go ahead and take a quick recap look at yesterday's action here at the DreamHack Open Valencia. First shot goes wide. Henny follows up with the second, and he's not going to fall back. He is confident to hold, but oh, now oh. he's got them. That's an incredible shot to hit. The collateral in the background. A push back in, and there it is. Contact made. Pilgrim going to peek out double with his teammate dropped in the meantime. Pilgrim finding his second. One man left up with Kiev. He can't find it. It's Pilgrim with four kills in the pistol round. A giant to find their first. Fiverr's in a prime position to just mow them all down. What to do though, and they're not ready for stuff. And once again, he proves that this safe on site belongs to him. Snix, well, not gonna check on no nope. Palace. There's a couple of fresh princes here. Nico doubles down. He's gonna go back for more, and it's three kills for him. Flipping this round on its head almost single-handedly. This is where Refresh currently sits. Actually passed it and all oh, that quick double from him, the third goes in with crosshair and oh my goodness. Is it still smoke? And now oh, AC doubles up, triples up, what is that? AZ's looking unreal down in CT, wants to try and get more done, and oh my goodness, AZ. Yes, AZ, the man with the golden pistol. Quite the showing there on that round of 5K, of course, what you might call an ace. But uh, on top of that, Group A, how did it play out, fellas? Is that a James Bond reference? Aren't we going with Mission Impossible this weekend? Okay, well, you know what? Thanks, Chad. Uh, you can always rain on my parade whenever you want to. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Let me wrap this one up for everybody quickly at home. Giants came in, they won seven rounds early, then they got blown out of the water by North. That kicked them down to the lower bracket. Ego, I said, uh, they're probably going to win the tournament. And, of course, they went and lost to Heroic, who did look fantastic. We did have that match between Heroic and North go down as the winners match, and that saw Heroic going through to be in the semifinals, which is going down tomorrow, a.k.a. Saturday. That'll be a bit of a banger. But... Giants versus Ego is where we have to turn our attention. And this should be a quick one, unfortunately, for the limited crowd I'm sure we have out there this morning. The Spaniards are probably going to get dispatched of relatively quickly. Completely agree with you. Uh, like you said, Ego was one of the favorites coming into this tournament, right? And sure, they had a rough day yesterday. Really can't blame them. Heroic were playing phenomenally well. Uh, we saw them beat North pretty uh, convincingly as well in Mirage. So, yeah, I think Ego should take this 2-0. But then again, 
Giants, you know, what are you expecting nah, nah, from them? Nah, nah, Nothing nah. yet? None of these. None, none of these. these. Just right. in cases. Or you. maybe. Or it's Counter-Strike. This should just be quick. An interesting point, Blair. You say a 2-0. And you, the viewer at home, might be wondering why I said a 2-0. That's because today is four best of threes. Some Ooh. of which will be sending teams packing. And others of which will advance them on, hopefully, to the semifinals on their path to tomorrow. But it's still a long day of Counter-Strike for just about everyone at that point. It's Friday the 13th. Are you superstitious by any chance? Um, I can be, sometimes. Okay, so Not that's really. like a 50-50 answer. Not really. It's always about 50%. Nah. Yeah. Nah. I mean, like, I mean, cats, ladders. Look, if crap happens, it's going to happen, right? Yes, that is the most eloquent way you could have possibly said that on the broadcast. Thank you. Kind of like these map vetoes. That's exactly what we're going to be jumping into now. Where in which we're going to find out the three potential battlegrounds here between Ego and Giants. So here's the here's the deal with a veto like this. When you are such a, a favorite, like an Ego in this kind of scenario, you should just ban away whatever you think your biggest weakness is because yeah. you don't want to play it. You don't want to have confidence going into that. And then just pick into your strengths. Don't worry about their strengths. Yeah, you know, just know that you're the better team. Pick into the maps that you're comfortable and confident on. And don't worry what they throw at you because you should be in charge no matter what map comes in. Uh, in which is video. interesting, right? Because uh, Inferno and Overpass are two maps which both these teams like playing. But like you said, like Ego should just be like, you know, comfortable playing both these maps. I'm sure. expecting to see Inferno overpass and a train as a decider here. Yep, this is pretty default bans, cash a map that uh, Giants never plays and Nuke is something which uh, Ego bans out every single time. Overpass Inferno coming out and it's going to be train as a decider. Bang, bang, bang. Well, I think, you know, like the, in terms of this whole scenario, you, don't, you never really want, when you ask, when it's such a stark contrast, you never really want to... <laughs> You're not going to sit there and go, oh, we're not comfortable on our map pick. You always want to go into it being really confident, right? Yeah. And you don't want to allow this to be like a map where it could go either direction. When, when you're closer matchup, it's maybe like tier one to tier two, and upset potential is definitely there. Then you're going to look at, hey, maybe we should get rid of their best map because we know that they can upset. But in this scenario, Ego, they're the stark favorites in my mind. And Absolutely. Veto that. Well, we're actually going to start talking about Giants first. So, oh, okay. Uh, we can stay the ship. Yeah, ni right. nice try, Chad. You were real close to getting to where we needed to be. But we are at the Giants. And, well, quite frankly, we don't know a whole lot about them other than yesterday, Kill Dream had a really good day. And Alex has always been a player on this team to look out for. Yeah, the, the thing with uh, Giants yesterday was I really liked how the way they started things off, but they weren't able to adapt to what North was throwing at them, right? It's like they just had a couple of game plans in mind after which they weren't really able to adapt, be able to switch things up, and it just like capitulated completely. I think 7-0, right? They had yeah. a lead and then yeah. lost 16-8. That's not something you'd be looking to see. Uh, it was an Inferno, uh, a map that Ego are historically pretty bloody strong on as well, right? And the next map is also going to be Overpass, which I'll be honest, I haven't really seen Giants play on it, but that's a map Ego are pretty comf uh, comfortable on as well. Yeah, I think coming into this game right here, if, if I have to be extremely critical, of what I saw from Giants yesterday. Even in the rounds that they were winning, they were still making a lot of mistakes. They did a set B execute, they missed Molotovs. They had a 2v2 after plan scenario, both players were stuck watching the same choke point. These guys aren't a team on the same level as Ego, and if I was Ego, I'd come out and play a very disrespectful style right. of CS. Now, sure, there are individuals in the server here, there are talents who can step up and win hand that rounds on their own, and we know the way that the economy can spiral, etc., etc., etc. But you saw the weakness there on their CT side, right? You, they, they may have started pretty well on their T side. They had some good, but that's where it's easy to run away with. That's where it's easy to punish a yeah. team who relies on AWPs, relies on utility. So for them, they just need to play a momentum-based style of CS and hope that their stars can shine in the moments when they need to, because they don't have the level of structure and strategy that a team like Ego on your screen right now has. Well, I'm going to throw a question right quickly. Right? Like, as a team, like let's look at it from Giants perspective. They're going to be coming as a massive underdog to say elimination game, right? What do you think they should do? Like just go in for more of a YOLO style of play? or just try and stick to what they've been practicing, so to speak. The thing is, what's the step? Where is the step taking them, right? And if you want to get the most out of this tournament, then probably YOLO, right? You just want to see what damage you can do. But if you actually want to try and build on something for the future, then go with your style, go with the structure, make mistakes now and learn from them and take that forward. But like I said, this is an event. This is their Super Bowl. How many tournaments do they get to attend right. on a scale like this? You may as well give it 110% and do whatever you have the best chance you think of winning is, which is probably letting your individuals off the hook <laughs> and trying to take on individuals here like Groovy. Well, I mean, you did bring up a, a fantastic point, Chad. I, when we talk about a team like Ego being able to come out of the gate and immediately start putting uh, sort of confidence plays on the other team, by all intents and purposes, Ego should just run over time. 100%. That's how this scenario should go down. But there is a, a chance where that doesn't happen. I just think that you're exactly right when it comes down to if these guys come out and play that disrespectful Counter-Strike, if they come play that get-in-your-face style of aggression, uh, no matter the map, 
I think we could see a bloodbath. Do they though? Like I've I've rarely seen Ego. Uh, the one thing I like about Ego is the way they play some fundamentally, you know, solid Counter Strike. Yes, yeah. Sounds yes, they don't really go for this aggressive plays. So despite the fact that they they should realize that you know the Giants are a very easy team for them to take on if they go about it in a very aggressive way. But will they? Is the question here. I, I don't think that they have the level of experience to know to come out and try and play like that. They're just going to go with their normal style and whatever that uh, kind of facilitates there as we get the door closed, we lock them in and we uh, throw away the key. But uh, the fact is. I don't see if you start in a best of three, hyper aggressive or trying to be ballsy or make those plays, it, it's not going to unravel very quickly. You have a best of three to work with, right? Yeah. It's not a best of one where you're going to get punished. This is the, the, the fact of the matter. And we just had Snatch you on your screen. He was the AWP player for uh, Ego. And on the other side of things, the most recent addition, OBJ, he's come back into the team, back into the, the Spanish Portuguese mix, and he is the AWP player for that of Giants. So the head to head here, they've only played one match each. So there's not too much. To take from this, but you can see they're relatively close in frags. Individually speaking, I was just like watching OBJ and uh, Kildream, I believe it was yesterday. But they, they got some chops, you know, they were hitting some pretty nutty shots and all. But like you mentioned, like at certain points, I think it was Inferno, the A bomb side, both the players in the 2v2 watching towards apartments, for example. Yeah. That's going to be a problem, and I think that could lead to the downfall here today. Well, both these teams having taken losses yesterday. Uh, one team with nine rounds on the board, one team with eight. Uh, this is an uphill battle going forward. They are no longer truly in control of their destiny, one might say. Let's go ahead and get this Twitch chat going. Get it fired up in there. If you are joining us this morning or this evening, late at night, whatever it might be, use exclamation point VGIA. If you want to, I guess, vote for the Giants. What, uh, the GG or something? Or is that like a bad sign? So to switch you know what? I, I'm not really sure how that played know. out. But there's also exclamation point Ago if you want to get that one into the chat as well. Well, now I'm going to implore you to do that. Stop spamming Ooh. XD. It's a little bit early for that as we take a look at the GG bet odds. Play walking through it. Uh, reasonable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's fair. That's pretty fair, right? I mean, I don't see any reality where Giants really come away with this. I haven't seen them do anything crazy. Yes, let's be honest. Like, they did take down Temple Storm a while back, uh, a couple of months back. They also took Hellraiser very close. But to be honest, right now, if you're looking, looking at current form, Ego or just like way better than the likes of a Temple Storm or the likes of a Hellraiser. And they should be, but this is one of those weird occasions where they're not coming into a matchup as an underdog, which may be a sign that's going to play on their mind, right? In the majority of games, they have Shaw versus Heroic yesterday. We said that they were probably the favorite in that matchup. But most of the time for these boys, Ego are not seen as a threat to anybody. In this tournament, it's the opposite. They're meant to be towards the top of the totem pole. And I wonder if that's going to play any, you know, mental games for them. I, th I think, you know, considering the staff that they have with them everywhere they go, they should be pretty fine. I think they run, run around with one of the biggest entourages that we see in esports. I, I think you really hit uh, hit on a really cool point there. Uh, the fact is, they go. They they have usually have very good group stages, right? They yeah. reach the playoffs and they always struggle. Like all the previous DreamHack events, even the Star Ladder, they had a crazy run you know, through the group stages to that uh, best of three Swiss system, for example. No one expected to reach the playoffs, and the playoffs they just fall short. Uh, and that could be because they're facing all the really good teams, and it could be the nerves, right? Yeah. And here, in this particular case, they are the favorites. And yeah, if that could, if that becomes a factor, I still don't see it being, uh, being an upset, though, let's be honest. How about this, guys? I know that we've already put all our eggs in the basket here for Ego, but now I need you to say it on oh, wow. camera, live, uncut, and documented for the folks at home. So we're going to jump right into predictions. Mm -hmm. Chad, you're going to be going first. And that's not optional. Do you want me to look down the barrel while I, I do this? I want you to look right down the barrel of that camera. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everybody joining us now on the stream. My prediction for Giants versus Ego in the best of three elimination match is none other than Ego. Outstanding. All right, next victim. What he said. Cool. Thank you very much for that, Blair. And <laughs> along with this speedily done prediction segment, I'm going to also go with ego because unlike yesterday after my losing or my winning streak was snapped in the five one game five lane it's not bad at all it's not good it's not acceptable all right okay I I look, stuff here. we're going we're we're all the way at the top but really we're only halfway up and i quote the doc when i say that so with that being said let's go ahead and take a look at the results from twitch chat i told you guys to stop spamming xd and you actually did it and you started participating in the votes so let's just see how it played out apparently the fans at home not, aren't necessarily uh, too one-sided on it's this. It's early. Maybe they haven't had their coffees yet or, you know, they're on their way to work and they accidentally hit the wrong button on the bus. These things are possible. I refuse to believe people would be that deluded. Uh, look, have you seen the society we're dealing with at the moment? <laughs> that is true. Let's not get into that right now. 
This could be a political discussion. Here's, Trey, what, take it away. Here's what we morning, should get Chad. into. You guys relax. I know neither one of you had a proper coffee for that conversation, but Chad, you have some friends over at this website, and that website is called Snipe. What do we know about Snipe? Well, you can uh, watch some HD content over there. You can get some uh, backstage kind of access to certain events, historical stuff. I haven't done the interviews recently. You can check out like Katowice. I was doing bits and pieces. Uh, I think Dallas I did some stuff too. But anyway, you can also watch the most important bit is all the POVs of the players as they play in these games. You can pick it. Hey, I just want to watch Snatcher on that AWP. Hey, I really just want to focus on the map so I can look at rotations. You can check out all that cool content and you get your digital pass. So uh, don't dilly-dally. Don't dilly-dally, says the Australian. We're still trying to... Sometimes we need a translating app for uh, him. You don't we, use dilly-dally? Um, listen, chat. we're going to go ahead and move you. forward and bring our commentators in who are up bright and early with us this morning. Uh, it's going to be Hugo and Scrawn Dog. Are you guys ready for a best of three today? I most certainly am. And for the record, Canadians are also dilly-dallyers. Yeah, dilly-dallys dilly the UK yeah. thing as well. Don't worry. You're not alone. I think the rest of Asia as well. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, you guys can dilly dally each other over there on the commentary. <laughs> yeah, so oh, we, we definitely plan on it. Have fun, guys. Uh, coffee is where they'll be heading, I'm sure. Yeah. And Hugo, we've already had our fresh brew, so that means we're hot and ready and good to go with the first two best of threes today. This one, ugh, I mean, I can't help but feel like, again, as they've already expressed on the desk, it could be a fast one. Yeah, that's, that's a bit of a worry of a couple of games uh, today as well coming up G2 VP. That's another question mark on that one. You know, can can we have that underdog step up? It's unlikely, and again, we don't really have anything to, to base off of an expected good result here from Giants. They showed some promise in the start of the game versus North, the first quarter, as you say, but it only really took them so far. Eight rounds deep in that map, and uh, it was a bit of an obliteration past that. So I'm hoping to see something, but again, as said on the desk, I'm not expecting to see something. Uh, the, the only thing, the only thing, Hugo, that floats in the back of my mind, and I'm, I'm going to slaughter the pronunciation, is, is yes. the, the Mocha XL or Moche XL Mocha, event. Yeah. Is it Mocha? I don't know. Oh. I'm guessing. Could be. Now, point being, of course, is that I was blown away when suddenly we saw this team play against Hellraiser's beat them on the first map in yeah. convincing fashion and then nearly take it on overpass in overtime in a 2-0 fashion. So Hellraisers are, are, are no pushovers on a map like overpass. The fact that we did have Giants there means maybe they can get something done. But it would be an upset, and especially once we consider what we saw yesterday, which was honestly, you know, a flat line. But alas, my friends, here we are. I believe that Twitch chat knows what's going on just because we have some probably Spanish and Portuguese fans out there. So yeah. thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting folks. And let's see if, of course, they can win this pistol. Ooh. Groovy. He's up on the short side of B-bomb site, and he's been taken down by Kill Dream, but they still haven't gotten that bomb on the site, although the frags are still working here for Giants. They've been able to push a player a little bit closer to the site, and that's not going to help them whatsoever. Three kills quickly back, and OBJ is just done for. Nice headshots there. Short water control, Hugo, was quintessential to their success. Again, that's a clear understanding. Or that's a clear example of Giants not understanding the setup there from, from AGO. They have three up in short water, and therefore the B site's open. So we see Giants fast play that monster, get the site for free, and still they plant. A bit of a questionable one, considering if the B site is empty, a site that you never want to completely leave unless you're playing retake. If there's no one playing retake towards the back of CT, and there wasn't, then you should be trying to work out where AGO are. And that was B short, so... A quick cleanup round coming in for the Polish powerhouse. Best team in Poland right now. I'm probably yes. going to prove that today with VP coming up later. I mean, it's, if it's not already proven, I would say it is. Pistols in the hands of the Vodafone Giants. And we've got some utility as well to set them up towards this A-bomb site. But AGO in a similar situation. They've got rifles as well to back up. As we have a couple of players up on this A site. The rotation's coming through and the Giants about to completely tunnel out of this toilet. Again, pistols can be dangerous at the best of times, so what can we see with these CZ-75s? Smoke down into the face of one of the rifles, but Snatchy's still going to find himself a little bit of angle. They've managed to work their way closer towards the Optimus Prime, where Arky digs down one. But look at those kills come in. Groovy on three, and a cleanup made possible by a very fast rotation. So they were given a lot of footing over towards bathrooms. They were able to get themselves close to the bomb site. But AGO, they played into this, right? They had so many bodies here and bodies that were so well equipped. 
And look how Grooby just mows them down, right? They have no stake in that fight. A single deagle kill again is all they got. And now they'll find themselves with simply five Glocks. One of the big worries for me as well today is when we highlighted the game, this game, at least from Vodafone Giants yesterday, we said back in DreamHack Valencia last oh. year. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, okay. Stolen the ace. Back in DreamHack Valencia last year, it was, um, you know, Alex on the side of the KPI. KPI side that actually, you know, managed to take an upset win versus Envious. It was Alex who dropped 25 kills, top fragged for that Spanish roster. And so we hyped him up coming into this event saying maybe, considering this is his second DreamHack Valencia in a row, maybe he can show us something. Yesterday, he got four kills. So... We're hoping he can step up here. We're hoping we can see something from Giants in that sense, but it's a little bit worrying when one of the players that you want to see at the top of the board is at the bottom. So now, rifles in the hands of Giants, and they are going to be going fast towards water through the smoke. Flashbang going to help them through, but hey, Joe, we're ready for it on the other side. Yeah, we saw a lot of moments like that on Inferno yesterday, right? Walking through smoke grenades. Flashbangs just not doing enough to blind the opponents on the other side, and so easy pickups were found a plenty. Right now, we still have this long A setup going forward, and I think OBJ may be caught off by it, but regardless of whether or not it catches him, he did catch all three players. All right, never mind. Oh, oh. my God, we're on the board. Five quick kills, rapid succession. Hello, Giants. Well, that's what I call a full house. Not a bad round at all from Giants, but yeah, I was just about to commend the setup there from AGO. Despite getting that first pickup, they still committed towards that long play. And you could see, after this kill comes through from OBJ, they try and flash over, but because he was close to the wall, peeking into party, the flash pops just a little bit too far to the left. And as a result, two more kills come from it. So the Giants are now here to play, Connor. We do have that AWP straight up into this buy around. AGO pulling that through for Snatchy and it's not an easy fight for OBJ to go up against the orping for the T side, but he's currently on an AK-47 down in the connector where that orp is sat. AGO have been playing a lot of grouped up CT positions so far, a lot of stacks so again for the third time. See this B short control, a double connector play. They're giving up the A site for the taking, but the Giants aren't going anywhere near it for the time being. moment's notice they could crack that door open and find two T's walking up right now. Perlin's dodging grenades and Snatchy's trying to find line of sight, but it will be two quick kills and a third man spotted already, but Snatchy's not going to be able to find himself that kill. No sir, it's going to be delayed a little because they have found an opening here, Hugo. They've worked their way into the B-bomb site by catching Grooby. He was, of course, that last man towards this side of the map. Unfortunately for Giants, they've lost their third player. They've lost that anchor from behind. Arky hits the dirt and Furlan, well, he wants to hit in from short, but he's lost another teammate. So there are still chances coming in, but nobody covers the bomb planter, and that's gonna be the biggest of issues. This short control has been a problem so far for Giants. In the two rounds, we've seen them actually find their footing on the B site. It has been their demise. And I don't understand why they're not expecting it. That's Alex again, same player planting the bomb without having cover. Oh, Kill Dream gonna get caught out from heaven this time, and it's just AGO completely outplaying in every sense of the word. It seems like Giants can't catch on to the setups that AGO are currently set, uh, you know, running here on the CT side, and that needs to change now. They need to work it out. We've been seeing so much short aggression pretty much every round, and Giants have spotted that most of the time as well, so it's not like they haven't had the info. Let's find out what they can at least do with it now with the knowledge intact. We've got two CZs and three rifles coming through in the fifth, sixth round. Still, AGO with plenty of money, and maybe a bit of a faster approach towards this B bomb site, but it's held. Slowed down by the Molotovs, and Kill Dream doesn't want to fully commit towards that short play because he knows how rampant AGO have been towards that position. But for now, they give it up. At least they have some kind of footing in short now. This time could be crucial. Kill Dream will exchange a couple of rounds with Tao. PHR floats the idea of pushing forward here. Remember, there are four players for AGO on this B bomb site. Kill Dream nearly dropped already. So we'll start to see this utility fly out from Giants, I'm sure soon enough. They may just wait for the smokes to dissipate from the side of AGO. Remember, they only have one smoke left over here on the CT side. So a utility response may not be seen towards B. And to go have no reason to go elsewhere. They could rotate another player up to the A site just because B hasn't been executed upon just yet. And then even though I would still keep three players down here because at any single moment, we could watch the Giants just come parading forward. 
but now they've left it to the nitty gritty, Hugo. 35 seconds on the clock. They're gonna go, they gotta go now. AGO fully run out of utility, but they do have a bit of a heavy stack here. Almost four players waiting in the wings. It's PHR up on the barrels, but no Molotov to get them out of position means this is lethal. And they still haven't moved out of Monster. He won't let them. One kill coming through from our Roman onto his teammate, but he does follow up with a trade. Still Alex can't, uh, finds another entry, but he can't win the round. Berlin dropping two. And AGO, clean as you like it, winning every single duel. These boys have been on the deathmatch this morning. It is very clear. Yeah. And you know what? I, I wanted to take note of this, right? When we were leaving yesterday after our games, yeah. we took note that both Giants and AGO were still here practicing in the prac rooms. And, and I love that, right? Uh, Chad talked about this on the desk. This is kind of their Super Bowl. This is their big opportunity and their big moment. And it was very refreshing to see them, even though they only had to play today, just grinding it out of those PCs, making sure that they were trying to be on point for the little opportunity that they may have. Because right now, things aren't looking too hot. They've had some footing, they've had chances, but when it's come down to the duels, when it's come down to the multi-frag, so far it is all a go. And it's flooding past them quickly. This round most certainly will be the same. We do have two P250s bought up, so maybe damage to AGO, but it's not even really worth mentioning because damage is not gonna be enough. This is a side already that is starting to slip very quickly away from them. And this is not a round where we expect anything to go their way. So Furlan just trying to drop these bodies with the SMG, makes some money, and he finds two. Alex taking down his teammate, but there's no gun to be retrieved. Furlan eventually falling. And now there's an opportunity to do some damage, but luckily the timing is good for Snatchy. Running in with a P250 can clean up that final kill. So AGO nice and clean to start this map off. Six and one here. We've had a couple of buy rounds for Giants, but they've been mostly unsuccessful apart from that one very aggressive setup from AGO up on long where they all went down to OBJ. So maybe we'll have the AWP here. That's something I've been waiting for. And no, not for now. Still no money for Vodafone Giants. They're going to stick with the AKs. And Snatchy has been a bit of a, a, an annoying factor to deal with, as he always is. And I think that was one of the big problems for me as well. Yesterday, we didn't really see OBJ have a great game up against Mixwell in terms of AWP v yeah. AWP. And it's not like he's even been a primary AWP uh, his entire career. Now we have Snatchy, who has, in my opinion, been phenomenal for AGO. In fact, the best player for this team through all the success they've been having as of late. That's not an easy thing to have up your sleeve to no. fight against if you're, if you're Giants at least. Most no, certainly not. Although, we really only saw something from Killdream. He was so impactful in those yeah. first seven rounds. The seven rounds that we saw Vodafone Giants put together. OBJ started to stand up towards the end of things, but you're right in, in kind of isolating the, the op presence, right? When he was getting frags, it wasn't dueling versus Mixwell. And Snatchy's the type of player who will actively seek duels. You can see him prying his eyes around the bathrooms at the current moment. And he does have to be cautious. It's for that reason he doesn't go too much further in here, because, of course, his only support is back behind him on the bomb site. Now, Pilgrim can make things interesting, because he's got a chance down towards this B bomb site. Quick little headshot onto Groovy. Will force this push. I love this. AGO, they're going to give chase out through Monster. So that's an easy kill as they catch him from behind. You'd assume, but he does get back around the corner. Won't be able to whip around. Knife? No. Info. Even better. They now know it's A. They fully rotate it off the site. Look at these CTs. PHR's already climbing up the stairway because AGO know what's about to hit them. It was a fake from Kill Dream down on B after that initial frag. But now the Vodafone Dryers, they've got 10 seconds. They've just got to go into the meat grinder. Furlan's on the other side, mowing down one. Snatchy with the AWP picks up a kill. And there's just no time. No hope. But Alex looks for something. Finding two frags. His teammate dropping another. And out of nowhere, it's no time. So close. But yet so far. Yep. Alex, he tried to get in onto the gunfight with Roman there. He had to prioritize the plant. His teammate could have dealt with the threat inside washrooms, but both players distracted. That was one hell of a chance made possible mm. by Alex and Alex alone. Yeah. Because for the rest of the round, you're just watching AGO pick them apart. The push in through Monster from behind, all the information, and as you said, that quick rotation up towards the A-bomb site. But time is a cruel mistress. And so, we suddenly have a go in with the double op. Despite a lost round, it's still a buy-in from the Giants. Double AK, Galil, CZ, MAC-10. Grenades, notably, as well. We haven't seen them head out towards that B site for a little while. Two rounds now that they have gone elsewhere. And I think the last round's a good example of how a go are going to be able to play these more aggressive and, and mid-round type situations where they just walk forward, you know, throw out 
throw out their line and see, of course, what they can catch. What they caught last round was a player by surprise. Op of Snatch is very dangerous in this position, not only because he can rotate up and down and try to find kills, but he too is in danger. So he's got to be cautious. It's spotted, the monster push. Groovy's got eyes on it. And he's trying to now get himself into the bomb site here. This could catch a couple players off guard, and it most certainly does. OBJ dead with no gun in hand. And PHR now into the bomb site with his teammates. The T's are hitting this brick wall of smoke. So once they finally walk through, it is a blunderbuss. Four to two are the body counts. And of course, the bomb's been dropped. Another response from Roman, but it's just not enough. Arky, though, he does retrieve a gun. Oh, is there a chance if there's a player close in the smoke and he's not ready for it? I'm loving these B setups from AGO. They are constantly, you know, switching it up every single round. We've only seen one actual B take from this T side where they've walked into players on the site. It's either been this CT defense up from the spawn or they've been playing heavy towards short. And the reason that setup in that round was so good is because not only is it an off angle for the contact play on Monster in terms of having a player boosted up in the CT spawn, but then the smokes come straight in and the CTs push back into the site. Meanwhile, PA HR's up on barrels and suddenly we have these T's thinking it's a retake setup when actually no, they've been completely tricked. AGO are bringing the pranks to the B site and they are taking the rounds away. Eight to one here. Pretty invaluable so far. Giants are going to call in a pause and definitely the right time to do so, but how much can they really change it? That's the question. Shouldn't be able to change anything with this type of buy. Always commend a good chunk of utility though they may just blanket this bomb site and push their way forward regardless of this early utility frag grenade's been out and phr always already called this and there's two cts still inside of the bomb site so if we get this expressed execution from giants they could be unknowingly walking into the meat grinder yet again groovy deep on monster players are going to try to trickle past remember there is little kevlar and no guns but Regardless of that, they still have found themselves too. If it wasn't for PHR picking up a double of his own and the rotation so quickly down here, then things really do get scary, Hugo. But fret not and fear not, my friends. They've got it under control. And again, like that's a great round for Giants. They get three kills. They invested barely anything. They're, they're still getting that loss bonus up that's maxed out now. But as you said just a few rounds ago, damage is not enough. You need rounds. Yeah. This is a, what, 9-1 scoreline here. 10-1. This is... This is yeah, very, very disheartening for Giants so far, and they've got to turn it around. They do have the Orc now, Connor. First time we've seen that for the T side. Maybe this could be the change they need. That push through smoke, albeit just with pistols, I know, it's very reminiscent to me of the Inferno game, where, again, we saw that happen maybe all too often. Um, even though they had so many flashbangs, even though they had so many smokes, if you're going to run through a monster smoke, then you need to start preparing to have a player pushed up close, especially if they have a read on the economy and may assume that you only have these pistols. But nobody flashes that player up in his face, so it's just an easy mow down for the moment. But like you said, we haven't seen an op, and we haven't seen them with this. Mm. Not too many opening frags going the way of Vodafone Giants. Currently though, off of their pick, they will still sit back and relax. Again, utility is strong, and their executions have been all right. Now Chad mentioned on the desk that we did see some flubbed grenades yesterday, and let's hope that that doesn't happen again here on this A site. And you can already see AJO prying back in. They want to put this back into a 4-4. Four four. They don't want to allow Giants to have this man advantage for too much longer. And it's crazy. The smoke is risky. Three on the other side. He's somehow going to get out of that one alive. But down to 40 HP. Tao is in a very compromising position. And he's got to get something out of it. Flashes and smokes going over. He avoids them perfectly. But 30 seconds on the clock. And the AWP strikes midnight. It's Tao left alone. And he can only find one. PHR now in a similar situation. But he climbs up and finds another. AGO in this round for sure, but they've got to get the next kill, otherwise things could turn impossible. PHR, he does it. Snatchy drops the bomb. There's one man left up, but OBJ might just be the man to save the day. Oh man, he just gets behind the box and oh, a hit shot drops him to 44 HP. The CT is all that's left. It's Snatchy off the op. This was the head-to-head -head we alluded to. This could be the clutch that gets Giants back on the board. And another shot connects, but it doesn't drop Snatchy either. Half the health of OBJ oh. and the frag will save the day. Great clutch from him. A second round for his team. And that's exactly what we needed, Connor. We said the AWP might be the game changer here for Giants. And OBJ coming in with a massive round. Quite literally pulling out the clutch. 
and keeping Giants in this game without it getting too ridiculously out of hand. Some great shots hit, and, and of course a great nade as well to Dunkle to Snatchy. Nine yeah. to two, Vodafone Giants, they just have to avoid the reset, but look at the money of AGO, it's only just enough for a buy. Yeah, just barely, they have them against the economic ropes. Tao's gonna play that hyper aggression, and he hears this push up from the playground, traded immediately back, and Snatchy retreats. He doesn't want to be the second casualty here. Especially when you consider that Ferdinand only has that Deagle. Now, unfortunately, of course, for a go, they're not going to be able to grab either of the guns which have been dropped. But they can still use Ferdinand as an expendable life here. Send him forward. Gain information. And if you're lucky, he can sit here as an anchor for the next minute. And look at the amount of times AJO have given up B anyway. Now yeah. they're definitely going to do it. With that position taken, you don't even need that to be convinced to leave the B site sometimes, or at least AGO don't. And as a result, they've just fallen back off of long because they realize that with B empty, it's very likely Vodafone Giants are coming towards this A site. And I feel what also plays into this is that a go are confident in assuming Giants may not play short to B. They haven't. Yeah. So many times it's been this emphasis on monster, emphasis on monster. Well, they're willing to take that gamble, but they will still send Groovy back down. He's going to move forward just to double check. They want absolute certainty. And now they should feel confident enough to eject him into the A-bomb site. However, by the time he gets there, this core unit of giants is going to work their way up long. Remember, they still have Roman over towards Connector, so he's watching for the flank similarly to that of Furlan. Snatch is going to be pressured up close, and he's already nailed the first shot, but it's still traded straight back. PHR into the bomb site will wait for Plant. And once he hears that sound cue, he's going to go for the gunfight. Second man in, takes him down. And it's a clutch again, but 10 seconds is not going to be enough here. And the drive-by from Groovy gets it all cleaned up, Hugo. It is a go again. Yeah, that's a shame. I do like the execute, though, from Giants. Instead of going for the typical smoke deep down long and flash yourself through, they wait until that smoke's about to fade and then take very aggressive positions to set up their utility. Instead of playing further back and having you know more time for AGO to react, the second those smokes pop on the site, they're already out. So, yeah, a nice attempt from Giants, but it's not going to be enough to dodge that reset. And as a result, we have them back down to pistols. Armor behind it. A couple of flashbangs and smokes here and there, but again, at 10 to 2, it's a small consolation. AGO are really hitting them hard, and they send them home, which may not physically be far away, but it's not exactly where they want to be right now. Three SMGs for AGO, it's not like they've got the most of money after losing three players in the previous. But this might just be enough again against such limited weaponry on this key side. Yeah, last time we saw a situation like this, this MP9 picked up three or four frags alone. Boom. So, there you have it yet again. Tau with a 3k, frag comes in for a little flare. A little pizzazz, some spice in life. <laughs> OBJ will he'll upgrade himself to that very MP9. 12 bullets in the gun. Not that it's going to matter. PHR cleans his head right off, Hugo. And we do, of course, still have these poles sailing forward. Yeah, and it's a consistent effort here across the entirety of AGO. No one man really standing out crazily. Snatchy top of the board with 13 kills, but I mean, the, the difference between bottom and top is 9 to 13. That's nothing. That's four frags of difference, and AGO are just uh, playing a team game right now. We've seen so many aggressive setups grouped up and you know, tradable positions, and now we're just seeing multi-kills from every single member of this team. It's kind of what we know AGO for. There's a reason that no one's made a roster change on this team for over a year, pretty oh. much. And yeah, Berlin, he's just having a great day. Just, he's just stop. Having a great day. Leave him alone, Hugo. <laughs> Give him a chance. Let them play the round. But this is what we could have come to expect, right? A go realizing that they are leaps and bounds above the Giants. But now exploiting that fact by just bullying them. One thing that's nice as well is this kind of reaffirms Chad's position on AGO, and I yeah, think a lot of people... A, he took a very strong stance. Yeah, and he took that yesterday. He said they were going to win the event, and they got kind of bodied by Heroic, so it was a little bit worrying. It's like, okay, Heroic are playing well, but are AGO going to continue like this? Anyway, continuing towards B is the Vodafone Giants, diving to their death. It's Groovy with two. Alex will find that crucial trade, but is it enough? Oh, Tao's just playing with his food. He will strike from behind. Last two T's walking forward now as Snatchy just cleans up shop. Yep. You are not just playing a single player in EGO, AGO right now. You are, you are not trying to deal with the hard carry of Snatchy. You have to deal with the entirety of this team because they are just all playing phenomenally. And as they should be, again, we talk about the gap between these lineups and, and we talked about how this could have been a possibility. Well, suddenly reality sinks in. 
The worry for this as well is the veto. I mean, it's already been briefly mentioned, but Overpass, this is Giant's pick, and it's been a map that AGO have always been comfortable on anyway, right? Following up is Inferno, AGO's pick, that's gonna be no problem. And even if we make it to a third, even if somehow Giants can draw a map out of this series, that's AGO's most played map, and in my opinion, their best. I've seen some great work from especially Snatchy up on train, so... Yeah, there's, uh, there's no light at the end of the tunnel here for Giants. They are going to need to dig deep and find some gold. Because right now, AGO are three rounds away from picking up their map pick. Yeah, it's looking dire. The Beanstalk's being chopped. Giants have to be cautious because... All heights to fall from. Shoot for the pistol. Get yeah. the pistol in three rounds. A little bit of momentum. A little bit of confidence, maybe. You can see the coach of Giants here just kind of kicking chairs and tapping shoulders. Let's go, boys. Game's not done yet. First half is in very convincing fashion. Again, an 11 point lead for a go on their CT side of their opponent's map pick. Giants trying to throw Roman up forward in order to play contact, but. Ugh, AGO, they're even going to oh, play a clinical pistol. They're so annoying. Like they're I, even going to play it like this. I, I love it, but I hate to play against oh, yeah. it. It's, it's like, guys, we're 11 rounds up. Let's hold on our T-side pistol for aggression. You know as well, this is such a likely round where, where the Giants just throw in something crazy and get aggressive. They won't, but look at this stack that we're seeing being employed. Four players up on the A-bomb site, all playing crossfires, all playing out in the open. And it's a great setup, but AGO is just waiting. AGO is just letting them stew in their own yeah. nerves, right? Oh, you'd hate to be Giants right now. And the severity of the situation sink in. But off of the flashbang, we will have a go make their first moves. Position themselves towards long. Take note, the bomb is still sitting back towards spawn. Yeah, this is very cool. They're going to rotate down connector here and go for a B split through short. That's the problem because the Giants are all up on A. Luckily, OBJ catches a kill, but they try and trade it back and actually walk into the crossfire. Arky's also here in toilet. So Vodafone Giants have thrown in an interesting setup that's actually worked out. Now it's a desperation play by the Polish. Pill Dream certainly going to spot what is coming inbound. The rem Ooh. remaining two players, AZ who? Both have to come on off of short. It is still damage dealt back by PHR. And look at Alex and Killdream. They are holding on with not too much health here. Do not sleep on the ability of AGO to win this 2v4. They're going to cover for the bomb plant. Now the retake's on, and they've even been able to retreat back into safety. The retake comes oh, forward, no. and the bodies go down. We're now even keel with a health advantage into the hands of the T's here. It looks like they've won a 3v5 if they can just lock it down, but it falls to Snatchy. It is 16 health combined for Giants. They've got to get on this bomb as well. They do have the kit to play with, but with someone trying to cover on just 8 HP, that's almost impossible. They haven't even worked out the fact that he's wrapped short and only now are tapping the bomb. Snatchy with contact, finding one, and it's a single kill left up, but he won't even need it. This round is done. <laughs> I got my hopes up. Yeah. I felt I felt good. Uh, I felt uh, good for them. In the back of my head, I, I was always seeing that 2v4 go the way of AGO. Very, very split attack there from Giants. Very separated. We could see the ability of the player on the site to just isolate these 1v1s. I think it was PHR. Just able to peek down into that uh, uh, sorry water part below heaven and, and able to you know get a free kill there with absolutely no chance of trading. Giants looking split. And at 14-2, I can barely blame them. You have to give props to that A setup, though. They're in a prime spot yeah. to shut down AGO. You saw them. You saw AGO even go back and try to duel, right? That's how they lost their their second player. Was this repeat through connector, as opposed to sticking to the plan and just heading straight towards the B site? They wanted to see what they could get. They challenged themselves to the three v five. Now the four v four. Quick clear of kill dream. There are still CTs here, and they're going to try to interrupt the push. It's an ambitious peek off of the scout, the first one to fall. OBJ still holds on to his, but poor old Arky is stuck in no man's land. Look at the health, though. I mean, it's doable. Very, very difficult, but doable here for OBJ. He can find a couple of kills and try and exit with that, but instead he just exits with the scout. The smoke is still towards the top of heaven, and with that, it seals his fate in this round. AGO, map point here on the Giants pick. Ridiculously dominant. And Furlan, 2 HP, absolutely not a deterrent. He's still going to hunt for this final kill, and with the range of the USP, he might just be able to find it. Oh, he's not going to one-tap him in the head, is he? Don't do this. Uh -oh. <laughs>
Yeah, uh, yeah, rough save. Obviously, so many bodies being thrown at you with, with the reserve decision in the start of the second pistol. You'd think maybe, Hugo, maybe they'd still play it cool. But you can't cool off these jets. A go soaring forward now. 13 point lead. A second force buy coming in off of the scouts and pistols. This one's a little bit better equipped than the last. Although, still, you can smell the desperation. Quick play now. AGO is just going to completely change up the tempo, and it will cost them the first player in. Arky is going to get split from two directions, and the player towards connector is a little slow, so there's no help there for Giants. They will still have both scouts. If there's a silver lining, it's that. Unfortunately, the fire pushes them back, and the frags towards heaven should too. OBJ, he's got something. A little bit to work with. Whoa. Could have found another. Does the damage, and we've seen them deal damage before, but now they need kills and rounds, and they're not gonna find anything else. This one is over. Snatchy's gonna go barreling in, <laughs> and a jumping gratata to close out map one. Glock in the face, it's the pistol whip that will finish off this map. AGO rub Giants face in the mud on their map pick, and they will just absolutely tear it out of their grasp. Not even close, and a fantastic performance from AGO. Again, just looking like such a solid union. And that reaffirms everything that we know about this team, right? They can perform, they can have these games. And yes, of course, it was against lower opposition. We just know this team at least hasn't, you know, despite their loss in the first day, hasn't completely fallen off and gone crazy. Hasn't, right? Hasn't, um, so yes. we know that they still are going to, I would assume, bounce back into the form that, that we could have expected from yeah. them. Uh, I think now, if that says anything to me, it's that Heroic may be thought playing a lot better than some would have expected. Mm. Uh, so that's exciting too, right? But what also is exciting is the fact that this series isn't done yet, folks. There could be a bounce back from the Giants. Will they stand tall or will they fall short? We'll see you after the break to find out.